Hello there fellow humans and welcome to another shop review. Is there anything worth buying? Let's have a look. And I'm also going to be looking at the SMV Vive Para, which might be a decent tank, but it is definitely not worth it given that it is in crates. But I'm going to have a look at the vehicle a little bit later if it's good or not. But first, obviously, let's have a look at the regular shop items and the resources here all include crates, so just ignore that. And then we go to the tanks and... A great bundle with not so great content. Now, 40 unlock times 5. Great for a bundle like this. 36 euros. Not too bad. 112 2. One of the better tier rate heavy tanks. Premium. Eh, it is not as good as a Type 57 or a Tornwagen. Or a T56 for, for that matter. But it is just below them pretty much. So it is fine. Not a tank that you want to pick up on its own. Because it's not really worth it. Not really good enough for that. But overall, a decent vehicle. But then, we got this waste of space. It's the, the TL7 of heavy tanks. Basically, it's not any good at anything, really. And it does have 7 degrees of gun depression, which is unusual for a Chinese tank. But that's about where the interest of this vehicle ends. So you're not really buying much that would be interesting. It is a very boring and generic vehicle. So, 36 euros for these two. I don't recommend it. If they put an object uh, 752 in here, epic bundle. But unfortunately that so nope not from me and uh you can also buy it for 17.5k if you don't want the money but i don't recommend that at all 7.5k for the 112.2 on its own is a bit too much it's a solid vehicle but it's not quite up there that i would absolutely recommend that it. it's, it's not a skoda uh t56 not a type 57 it isn't a 2 ftu it's just below them so for that i wouldn't recommend it directly then we have the vk90 which is like the vk72 but it can actually so it's great uh, don't ever attempt to side scrape in the VK-72, just a side tip there. Now, you sort of have the mouse gun, but 275 millimeters of data penetration, which is quite outrageous for a vehicle like this, so that's already very good. You can side scrape this vehicle incredibly well. However, you do have to watch out for the sides of the turret, because you can get penetrated here by high penetration premium rounds. If you are side scraping and you hold the turret like this, you can get penned at an angle about here, so watch out for that. The lower plate obviously is a weak spot like it is on any other tank in the game, except maybe the 268 version 4, which you can still pen with the premium rounds anyway. Watch out for the lower plate, try to hide it. You do have 10 degrees of gun depression over the side of the vehicle, which is a great thing. If you watched last week's shop review, I did go a little bit more into detail about the vehicle, but generally, it is a good tank that is worth it if you want to play this kind of playstyle, the super heavy side scraping, uh, bending around corners kind of playstyle. if you're into that then this is the vehicle for you obviously if you like medium tanks then this is a waste of money for you but the speaking of waste of money that but if it's not fun to you then it's a waste of money the kunza panzer was given away for free i think like two years ago this bundle it's two tier sevens this one's been given away for free e25 it is fun if you're into fast cockroach tank destroyers but generally for grinding creds it is not something i would recommend and then we have another bundle that is suffering from uh, tank dysmorphia because we have a great vehicle in here in the T77, which is probably the best tier 8 autoloader in the game. Two shells, 380 alpha damage, 10 degrees of gun depression, solid enough armor, and good mobility for a heavy tank. That's what we have here. And then we have this fat piece of fat right here. It's big. That's about it. And you can pen it very easily just about anywhere. The only advantage it does really have is the shield makes noobs think you can't pen it, even though the lower plate is very penable and very easy to pen. You've got at least 210 penetration standard here, which is better than 180, which a lot of tier 8 medium tanks still have. Uh, but outside of that, there is nothing special about this vehicle. So if you want the T77, I would probably prefer you just buy it like that, even though there are probably going to be bundles where it is going to be cheaper in the future, like an auction, possibly. So I don't recommend that whatsoever, simply because the price is too high and the M48 is not good enough to be in here. Very simple. Then, buy that, because they're both great, basically. If there's anything you buy in the shop, this is probably it. Like, unfortunately, the times 5s are locked. If, if the 40 times 5s unlocked would be in this bundle, then it would be absolutely excellent. But unfortunately, you can't make great bundles, so... That's why you got the Tornwagen, you got Type 7, both at the top of the pile of tier 8 heavy tanks, um, pretty much. And then you got the, the lock time slides in here. So, great bundle, two very good vehicles. If there's anything you buy, this shop be that. Right? 
Then we got the 907, which is the Premium Object 140, essentially. Or the T22 Medium more fits to the playstyle of the 62A. This one fits more with the playstyle of the Object 140. So if you really love the Object 140, you can consider buying this. But if you don't own the Object 140 or don't play the Object 140 a lot, then this is a profound waste of time and money. Because it isn't really that special. It doesn't stand out much. It's just there, pretty much. I mean, you have an STB... That's going to just dwarf all of it. You have a Leopard 1 that just completely annihilates this vehicle. It doesn't even have that much armor. Like, it's a Soviet medium and you can just pen it just about everywhere. So, not really all that great. But if you really love the Object 140, if that's one of your favorite tanks, then you can consider picking this up. If you can't afford it, if you love the Object 140, if you play that a lot, pick up this one. That's my recommendation there. And then there's the M48, which is still a waste of space, so don't buy that. So... Again, my recommendation goes to that. And the very important news, depending how long you've been playing World of Tanks Blitz, you can now get yourself the Victorious Years container that, if you've been playing for 10 years like me, you can get a Concept 1B. If you're playing for less than that, you will get different rewards. Let's open this one. Obviously, 7.5k gold is not too bad as a compensation. So there it is, 7.5k for the Concept 1B and 1,000 out of the container. That is pretty nice. Now we scroll down into the awful section, where the Vipera happens. Now, let's have a look. Is this tank any good? Is it worth it? Well, obviously it's not, because it's in crates, but... Let's look into a battle. Let's see if the tank is at least good, if the offer is already that shit. So, is this tank any good in terms of gameplay? Let's ignore the price real quick for that, because... We all know that crate tanks are terrible price offers and you should never, ever buy a tank that is in crates unless you hate money. So, here's the thing about this vehicle. I've got to compare it to the regular curated Italian tankster. And the first thing that immediately happens is it has a lot less DPM. So that's the massive downside here because it is the auto reloader here with the second shell that you can't really use. So you lose a lot of DPM for the advantage of being allowed to lose even more DPM if you fire that second shell. That comes in handy barely any time, because if your reload's twice as long, then uh, it's not really helping anybody in a situation that is very stressed. So, not really an advantage, the second shell. It's like in the Bizonte as well. You have the second shell for ultra emergencies, but it is not really going to be much benefit to have them in the first place. You'd rather better be off with a single shot that can reload quicker and has more dpm but that aside then the aim time and the dispersion is slightly better the end time is better by a margin that you might actually feel now the traverse angle 60 degrees 60 degrees is also quite a bit better you're gonna definitely notice that difference well see this is a, a situation where you could use that second shell um to finish off the g so but now i have to get out of there I can only use that second shell when I know that no enemy is actually able to attack me in the next couple of seconds. Because there is an enemy that's around me, I cannot use that second shell ever. That's kind of the problem. But aim time's better, dispersion's marginally better, and the aiming angle is a lot better. So that's an advantage right there. And the mobility, slightly better. You're not going to notice the difference there. Like, you're not going to notice the difference between 11.3 and 12.3 in a power to weight. You're not going to notice the difference on the battlefield unless you measure it directly, right? Minor differences like that, you're never going to notice the difference. But, traverse speed. Do you have 28 instead of 23? So, you have an advantage there. At the caveat of having slightly less armor. About 15 to 20 millimeters less. So, overall... Look at a vehicle that is relatively balanced towards the regular tier rate and destroyer here. Obviously it doesn't make it worth it, but it does make it decent enough. And makes it solid that you can eventually, when it comes to the shop for 8,000 gold. It's not going to be the next time it's going to come in the shop, don't worry. Next time it's going to come in the shop is going to be 12,500, probably. So it's not going to be worth it then either. But after that, once this vehicle is sold in probably about one to one and a half years for a decent price, then it is a vehicle that is 
possibly even worth picking up because the stats do work. Obviously, it doesn't have the uh, DPM, but it does have slightly better aim time. It does have slightly better traverse speed. It does work quite well. And it's a tank destroyer, so me praising a tank destroyer, you already know the. You already know that, but then again, it does have a turret that can traverse somewhat. And it does have seven degrees of gun depression, which is not an okay value, but it's the same as the regular retaliant one. So it works. Now, how do you play this vehicle? I play it like I would play a regular heavy tank, essentially. What I most of the time do uh, these days, what I find to be most effective and most idiot proof, essentially, is you go either towards the middle of the map or towards the medium side of the map at the beginning and then from there you figure out where are the enemies where are the weaknesses of the enemy team for example that 53 pb is just sitting around he's not able to do anything panther's just peeking out like a complete clown so here i know there's no enemies around i can bump the second shell into him and absolutely would gimp my dpm and now i see the enemy team is up there which means i'm gonna have to retreat and use my team as extra cover to be able to do more damage now obviously the team being uh, down at the beach is awful for map control and also for winning the game because you need to have the map control or the high ground um but generally what i'm going to do here is i'm going to retreat myself behind the team because i can see this is not going to end very well right you see the team composition you see where the enemy is positioned and then you know okay this game is probably going to be a loss so i'm going to pull back I'm going to position myself behind the teammates so that either I can do enough damage to compensate for the incompetence of the team or I'm going to go down having done a lot of damage and lose the battle, both of which I don't see as a loss because, hey, if I do like 3,000 damage in a tier 8, I didn't lose. Kind of was the team. So don't get, don't get mad at something when you did well, but everyone else failed you. Hey, don't get mad at that. Be proud of yourself. For that your team will suck your team suck that happens it's it's world tanks blitz teams suck all the time but again see i'm pulling back here using the distance and the terrain as an advantage here right because the further away i am in this case uh, from the enemy and this is not just a, a matter of five meters and 500 meters this is five meters and 200 meters bit difference here that they have to close up and that i can use to reload to get into the shot and that is 3,200 damage there, and now I'm going to get dive-bombed by the ore. Is he? Uh, he's not quite sure yet. Oh, there he comes. And now I'm going to get missed and died. It's a decent tank. Obviously. Like, it works. You know, it's, it's not like a... a whatever that thing, that, that check thing was called. It's not like that. It's, where it's just a waste of space. This thing is solid. But obviously don't buy it because it's great. With that said, thank you very much for watching, and see you for the next one. Goodbye.